Yeah, as you got out of bed this morning, uh, you may have learned of the news that Ireland stunned the West Indies to reach the Super 12s of the Cricket World Cup. Massive, massive news from Tasmania for cricket fans. And we're now joined by journalist uh, Nathan Johns to, I guess, talk about the significance of this and what it means for Irish cricket. How are you, Nathan? And what time of the morning is it? It's, it's late. Uh, I've just been kicked out of a, a press room and it's now started raining. So trying to find internet somewhere is interesting. Funny enough, uh, Zimbabwe, who are also an audience group, just won their second their match, and their team bus just pulled by, and they're getting off. So there's a, a lot of singing Zimbabweans in the background. So apologies for that. But yeah, it's late enough, but you know, plenty of adrenaline going after after what happened earlier. What were your expectations going into this game from an Irish perspective? I tell you what, the, the win was definitely on the cards. Um, obviously, you know, the West Indies, a team with a lot of history. You know, for as, as long as any of us can remember. But equally, in T20, they've won the World Cup twice. Um, in the last decades, uh, but they've been a pretty poor side in the last 12 to 18 months, and they've been on the way down. Ireland's look, they've been up and down, but they've always had these sort of big performances in them, and the one thing I would say is when they get into these situations where they've got games in multiple days, they tend to start poorly, and they get into it, and they work into it well, so I thought, look, they got out of jail on Wednesday against Scotland. Uh, if they put in a decent performance today against a side that's definitely out of form, I didn't necessarily think they would win, but I thought it would be competitive. Where does this uh, rank in terms of uh, Irish upsets in cricket? It depends who you ask, to be honest, because T20 cricket kind of divides opinion as the shortest format. It's, it's not the pure format, so to speak, like Test cricket, or to a lesser extent, 50 overs, one-day games. Um, I think it'll, nothing's ever going to top Kevin O'Brien in 2011, mm. because that was against England. Um, and again, it was a stunning comeback win. Uh but people of a certain generation, people my age who grew up watching a lot of the short form T20 cricket, um, look, it, it, it'll rank very highly for them and it'll get a lot of new people into the sport because it's the most accessible, easier to watch format. So, look, it's it's massive because it signifies a, a shift in form in a in a part of the game that Ireland historically struggled. Um, so it's it's definitely top five, probably not up there with, with O'Brien 2011, but it's, it's certainly, you know, I, I'd put it top five. Is this redemption, we'll say, 12 months on from the Namibia disappointment? Well, it's 364 days, actually. I looked it go. up from my... Uh, from my Do my your report. research, yeah, Johnny. Yeah. Ex- ex- <laughs> yeah, close enough. But no, yeah, 100%. Um, especially because... Look look at someone like Gareth Delaney, um, who was man of the match today with his, for his bowling figures. He had a career best day with the ball. Um, he actually was largely in the team last year as a batter. Uh, but by his own admission, look, his own words, not mine, I don't want to be harsh on the man, but he said to me earlier on this summer in that game against the Mibby, he choked. And it wasn't just him, it was the side as a whole, but, you know, when he's saying things like that, and then he comes out in a man of the match display in another knockout game to put them through to the next stage of a competition, bear in mind, they haven't progressed in this competition in 13 years, uh, which is another dynamic. Um, so, yes, that's just one player, but it nicely sums up uh, what you said, the, the full circle aspect of, of the previous 12 months. How good were the bowlers in general, Nathan, here? Excellent. Um, they were both excellent, and the way the captain used them, I thought, was excellent. He he didn't his two best bowlers, Josh Little and Mark Adair. Um, the tendency can be to give them a lot of time early on, try and put the game to bed. But he actually held them back a little bit because Ireland tend to struggle in the middle section of the game. So he actually held those guys as better players back to the middle uh, part, and it worked really nicely because it meant the West Indies had to take risks against Ireland's secondary bowlers, and that's where the success came. Um, so we'll skip, hats off to the skipper, Andrew Balberni. He's actually got a bit of stick this week for some of his tactical decisions in the field with bowlers. Um, so, you know, if we're going to, you know, beat him when he makes a mistake, you've got to praise him when he, when he gets them right. Um, so Ireland's bowlers were excellent. I think you have to look a little bit at the West Indies' uh, decision-making and game plan. Everyone associates the West Indies with being an aggressive side. They like to score lots of sixes, lots of boundaries. Mm. They just didn't really show any of that intent today. Um, they looked very sedate very mellow. I don't want to say nervous because that's not something you associate with, you know, with Caribbean cricketers, but they had a lot on the line here. And I think it's a bigger, it would have been, put it this way, it would have been a bigger ups, uh, embarrassment for West Indies to do this game for Ireland. And I think the fact the way that they went out there and didn't really show a lot of attacking intent at all, look, you might be putting two and two together and getting five, but at the same time, those two might be linked. And what was the vibe like among the Irish players after? Ah, it was unreal. Uh, look, there's about, I'd say, 50 or so Irish fans here. About 90% of them are f- our family or, or, or partners, etc. Mums and dads, brothers, sisters. Um, so, look, they, they're all straight over to the stand. 
you know, lots of hugs, lots of embraces, lots of, uh, you know, words of encouragement. Um, I, 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 you know, it'd be a good night tonight. I know they're all out in Hobart. They, uh, they came second in the group, which means they play Sunday instead of Monday. So they don't have the extra day off. So I'm sure it won't be too manic. But, uh, you know, they're definitely celebrating. And look, it's, it's a very young, old young team. Uh, it would have been very demoralizing go out but the flip side is it's fantastic that they've managed to stay in it yeah and honorable bernie said that like the aim was to qualify if i get this right uh sri lanka england australia new zealand and afghanistan away yeah bang on um uh, sri lanka still in hobart on sunday uh the big one is obviously england in the mcg look that's the one that's going to get the uh, the casual fans going, isn't it? I mean, the MCG and AFLs and and what happened there a few weeks ago uh, with the Irish representation in that grand final. It's it's a venue that for one that's so far away, it's it's quite relevant. To, it's it's an Irish sport at the minute, and, and here we have an actual Irish national team competing in it, um, and against England of all people. So look, that's next Wednesday. So that's going to be the highlight of that campaign. Um, Afghanistan and Sri Lanka are probably the two games they'll target. Uh, they beat Afghanistan in August, 3-2, at home in a five-match series. And Sri Lanka also came through the qualifiers. Um, and now, look, Sri Lanka will be favourites in that game. But the four Ireland are in, they won't fear them. What about New Zealand? New Zealand are an interesting one. Um, they played Ireland in the summer in three games, three T20 games. And probably had a very really comfortable series win for New Zealand. They beat Ireland 3-0. But it's very different New Zealand sides. The beauty of this is the games come so so thick and fast that form can be found or lost very quickly. So, look, we haven't actually seen a lot because the whole point is, apart from the qualifiers, the guys were already qualified for the Super 12s. They haven't played yet. They're just playing warm-up mm. games. So we actually haven't seen any of the bigger teams in proper competitive action for quite a while. So it's tough to say. But, look, Ireland are a team that they played three games and they've gotten better every game. So you'd like to think that progression will keep going. Just finally, Nathan, and we, we have memories of like the, the, the crowds in these venues with the tricolours really taking to them. Is there any scope for the Irish diaspora now to come out and actually support the boys in green here? Oh, yeah, massively. Like I said, uh, they've got two. They're not playing England in Melbourne. They're also playing um, Afghanistan in Melbourne on Friday. Look, there's going to be... I, I haven't looked up the numbers, but I'm imagining there's a hell of a lot more Irish diaspora in in Melbourne than there is in, in Hobart, uh, for sure. So, uh, And to be fair, there were, there were a fair few tricolours out um, from locals in Hobart. Because, you know, the, the beauty of Irish cricket uh, the communities is so small. So you, when you see people in the stands that you recognise that are friends friends and family of the players, you know who they are. But if you don't recognise people, they, you know, they must be locals. They haven't travelled over. So there's a handful of them in Hobart, but I'd imagine there's going to be far more in, in Melbourne and they're up in Brisbane as well, Adelaide too. So they're going back to mainland Australia now where hopefully there'll be uh, more support for them. Is that the end of your night now or is the fun just starting in Tasmania? Uh, we'll see what happens. I've got a few few bits and pieces work-wise to do, a few reports to file and interviews to, to transcribe. The beauty of working in two time zones is it'll be a late night for me. <laughs> All the best, Nathan. Thanks, Emil.